لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك So um, our Sheikh was saying that um, when we receive the passport, um, inshallah, that means we have to start with the Talibiyah and have that niyat wherever we go so we can get used to that because this is going to be with us along, um, along the trip, the journey, inshallah. And he was saying, if God forbid somebody doesn't go because he got the visa, it's as if he went, inshallah, he'll get that sawab. So we have to have that Talibiyah in our heart, in our mind, and keep reciting it until we get there, inshallah. So, inshallah, we're going to start um, our program. Uh, inshallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Muhammad kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Okay, so today's agenda is going to be program schedule and flow, preparing for the trip, useful tips, Hajj philosophy and responsibilities, quick review of Hajj rights, inshallah. So, next page, please. Uh, so we have different routes, inshallah, I'm going to talk about, um, we have three airplanes, three routes, inshallah. So some of our um, hajis or some of our passengers are going to fly from San Francisco or Los Angeles and we're going to have a stop in Frankfurt. That's where we're going to wear our ihram, especially for the men. The ladies, if you're, um, if you're okay, uh, if you're comfortable, you want to start from the home, uh, you can do that, inshallah. You can uh, wear your regular clothes that you're going to use for throughout the journey for Tawaf, which is uh, going to be your Ihram, inshallah. You can do that. Uh, for the uh, gentlemen, you can uh, change your Ihram in Frankfurt, if you're, uh, if you're going that route. For some of our passengers are going to be leaving from San Francisco, um, LA, uh, via uh, Emirates. So if we're taking uh, the, or if we have a stop in uh, Frankfurt, we're, we're going to be um, taking uh, Lufthansa, inshallah. Uh, to have a stop in Dubai, they're going to be taking Emirates Airlines. And that's, that's where they're going to change their ihram. So I, I, from, from going from here, I think they're not stopping. Uh, they're not going to have a layover. Uh, so you're going to have plenty of, um, yeah, plenty of uh, time to basically take a shower, because Dubai Airport is like the best. You know, they have showers. They have, uh, they have a mosque there. Um, so it's very convenient for Hajjaj. Uh, for for uh, those hajjaj going through that route, they could take shower and uh, you know put their ihram there, and the ladies can do that as well if they want to do that. So our other route is uh, from San Francisco uh, going to Hong Kong. That's going to be Cathay Pacific. Uh, going from uh, San Francisco to Hong Kong, and that's where they're going to change their ihram from there to Dubai. Dubai, they're not going to uh, get off the plane from Dubai to Jeddah and Shamba. And our um, uh, some of our passengers will be leaving via uh, New York through Saudi Air. So basically they're going to be going from San Francisco to um, JFK. From there um, they will um, wear their ihram or if they choose they can do it on the plane. Because Saudi Air, um, they, have, uh, they have a special place where you can go change your ihram. They have moved like two seats from the back where you can do your salah. So it's very convenient. Um, you have a choice to do that. But for the ladies, you wear your ihram uh, at the airport, inshallah, at JFK, because uh, that's what we recommend. But for the gentleman, uh, if you wish to do that, you can you know, put your ihram in, inside the plane. Um, and our, uh, some of our passengers will be leaving from uh, Houston, that's Qatar Air. So they're going to be going from Houston to Doha. Doha, they're going to spend the night there, and then they're going to change ihram there from Doha to Jeddah, inshallah. So this is the dynamic of our group, inshallah. We're about 75 people, inshallah, leaving from different uh, areas. And we'll all get together um, uh, in a hotel, inshallah. So, so basically, uh, the people leaving on Lufthansa, inshallah, uh, from uh, different uh, cities, some of them are going to be leaving for, from Seattle as well. So we're going to be together uh, in Frankfurt. Frankfurt will take a plane together and we'll go to uh, uh, Jeddah, inshallah. So from there, we'll be together. We're going to take buses. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, the buses leaving from the airports, uh, Jeddah, 
and Medina is uh, not our private buses because we're not allowed to take our private buses. So hopefully we'll, we'll have a bus that, that works, you know, because uh, one time we went, this one bus was going five kilometers per hour. So it's a government bus and inshallah, have patience and hopefully we'll get a bus that works, inshallah. So we're not allowed to take our own private buses in two places, uh, Jeddah Airport and uh, Medina Airport. But throughout the journey, we'll have our own private buses, inshallah, for our group. Um, our mother group is Alima, which is based in New York. Um, they, they take about um, three or four hundred hujaj altogether. And uh, I'm a subgroup, and he has other subgroups. Ours is Tawheed Caravan. We'll have our own private buses. So whoever registered through us, we're going to have our buses. We're going to have two buses, one English-speaking, one Farsi-speaking. And we're going to have that bus throughout the journey, inshallah. Uh, we'll be together. So basically, coming from different routes, uh, uh, people taking uh, the passengers uh, going from uh, Emirates and Cathay Pacific, Saudi Air, they're going to uh, get there on the 1st of October, inshallah. So when they get there, we have Sheikh Imam Sadullah, who's going to also arrive at uh, the 1st of October, inshallah. He's going to um, uh, probably arrive earlier than the other two flights. He will wait for you. Uh, so basically, when you um, when you are taking the bus to um, Mecca, you're gonna have two stops on the way for a passport check and for the visa check. Have patience because uh, this is gonna take about five or six hours. So and the wait uh, sometimes is long, sometimes it's less. Sometimes it takes five to eight hours. So just have patience. You know, do zikr, do your talbiyah. Just focus on that. I know you're tired. You had a long flight. But you really have to have a lot of patience because, you know, uh, Allah really tests you. And that's what starts from uh, San Francisco airport when you leave your house. So have lots of patience, inshallah. Uh, so from there, you're going to go to the hotel. Uh, if uh, our Imam gets there earlier than you guys, uh, he'll be waiting for you. Your rooms are already um, set, uh, three people per room. If you're paid for double, you're going to stay in double. Uh, three sisters in one room, three brothers in the other room, so your rooms are all set. If you're families, uh, we, uh, we try to put you together. Uh, if you're four, we have to separate one, and we have asked you if you can do that. And uh, for, um, for sisters uh, uh, and brothers that have the same language, I've tried to do that. I've tried to put you together so you can communicate uh, with each other. Uh, because some of, them, some of us don't speak English or some of us you know, just speak Farsi or Urdu or something. So I try to, uh, try, try to facilitate so you have your room so where you can uh, basically communicate with each other. So inshallah he'll be there and then you have your rooms and uh, he'll have a specific time that he's going to say, okay, we're going to meet at this time, for example, let's say 3 o'clock in the afternoon or 4 o'clock. Uh, you're going to come down and you go with him. You're going to do your Umrah together uh, with him. He's going to be there. Um, he'll wait for you. He's not going to be like, if he gets there, he's going to get his group and go do it. No, he's going to wait for everyone to arrive. So you're going to be about 30 people where, where he's going to take you and do your Umrah together. And for the uh, group leaving uh, on Lufthansa, which I'm in that uh, plane as well, uh, with uh, Dr. Saif, uh, we're going to arrive on the second, inshallah, the following day. So, uh, and then with that group, we're going to go do our Umrah together, inshallah. And after that, we'll be um, together, basically. We'll do all the activities together, and you know, inshallah, from, from there. Okay, so basically, um, the steps uh, of the journey is, like I was saying, from Jeddah Airport, uh, we're gonna go to Mecca, uh, from Mecca, uh, five nights in Mecca, uh, Swiss Hotel, inshallah. And basically, in Mecca, we don't have a lot of activities. Uh, we're not allowed to have bayans or gatherings. This is against the Saudi law. Um, they don't like that, so if you, this, we're not allowed, even in the hotels, inside the hall rooms, we can't, we can't have gatherings or bayans. So basically, uh, in uh, Mecca, inshallah, you'll be uh, focused on your ibadah. You're gonna, I, we want you to spend your time in haram. Uh, if you're not doing uh, umrah, just uh, do tawaf. Or just sit down and look at uh, Kaaba, basically. That's what we want. I, I don't want you to feel like, oh, we're not doing anything, I'm missing out something. Because a lot of people, for that five days, they feel like they're not doing enough. Uh, and they keep coming up and asking me, what are we doing? What's our activity today? And basically, you have to just focus. Uh, and uh, In Makkah, you have to focus on Yabada. Go to the Haram. Uh, try to spend most of your time inside Haram and get the best of Haram. Uh, and if you don't want to do anything, just go and sit down and just look at Kaaba. And you get so up for that. 
um, do tawaf. Uh, if you don't, if you don't feel like doing umrah, if you don't have the strength, just do tawaf. Seven tawaf, do two rakats of nafal, and basically uh, focus on that. Uh, we'll have one tour in uh, Mecca. We're going to be seeing um, basically the uh, Arafat and uh, Muzdalifa, and uh, we're going to take you to Jabal al-Nur. Not climbing, of course, but uh, right underneath it. And, and uh, Jabal al-Sur, uh, basically we're just going to go and drive around to that. And uh, we'll have one khatam. This is a very special khatam that we do every year in Mecca. Uh, in Haram, uh, we go and we do Khatma Quran. Everyone who knows how to read Quran, they do, we just meet up. Even if you don't know, we just go there. Uh, we'll specify what time or what day, inshallah. And we go there and we do Khatma Quran. And we have a very special dua that our, uh, our Shaykh last time that went with us, beautiful. And there's no uh, eye that doesn't cry, honest to God. And you'll remember that, inshallah. So basically, that's our um, program in Mecca. Very. Uh, you know, relaxed, and we leave this schedule up to you to go to Haram, and it's uh, very convenient. Our hotel is right there, basically, and you have no excuse not to be in Haram. So basically, your shopping and everything, do it very minimal. Leave your shopping in uh, Medina, because Medina, you have more time. There's no Tawaf, there's no Umrah. Basically, there's five daily prayers, so you have plenty of time. Um, but in, uh, in Mecca, please, please, use your time wisely. Stay in Haram. I mean, just stay inside and just savor every moment because when you leave, you're gonna. That's the only thing you're gonna regret. That I wish I was there. I wish I stayed in Haram more. I, I didn't have to be inside my room. Uh, the only time you should be in, room, in your room is just uh, tr making wudu or changing uh, your clothes or just resting for like a couple of hours. You know. So basically, you know, you have to be in Haram, inshallah. That's that's what we say, inshallah. So um. And then from uh, uh, when you arrive to uh, Jeddah, inshallah, basically you'll have your ihram, like I said. Whichever route you're coming from, make sure you have your ihram on and you have to do your niyyah. Because uh, when you pass the miqat, uh, sometimes uh, we recommend, like in uh, Dubai, sometimes we recommend that you just do it at the airport. Um, or even in Frankfurt, because some people might be taking a nap or resting, uh, you know, when, when we pass the miqat. Because when uh, each plane, when we pass the miqat, before they pass the miqat, they give you a little warning. They say, okay, in half an hour, we're going to you know, pass the miqat. So you'll have enough time to do your niyyah. But what if you're sleeping and you know, somebody doesn't wake you up or something? So we recommend, uh, if you can, if you're, if you're not sure that you're going to fall asleep or anything, just do your niyyah uh, in that airport before going to Jannah. Um, if not, then you'll have a chance to... Uh, Basically, uh, do your niyat when you before you pass the miqat, inshallah. So, um, uh, so everyone should be in ihram before going to Jeddah. And uh, so, basically, like I said, your test starts. Your test starts in that uh, going uh, from your home, basically. Um, in the Jeddah airport, it might take about um, five to eight hours just to get out. Uh, because there's a lot of people and their system is a little bit slow. It gets better every year. Like last year, it was faster. It took us about three hours, alhamdulillah. Um, you know, it, it, when you pass the, through immigration, that's a little bit faster, but then you uh, pick up your luggage uh, and then you have to pass through the, um, uh, the passport uh, visa process. They have uh, special people, they're just sitting down, they, have, they, take, your, they, they, take, uh, they take that cashier check out that's very important, and they check that you have your um, uh, meningitis vaccine, and basically um, they uh, they have to process that. That takes a long time because they're doing it with their hand. Hopefully, we go this time. They have computers; they can do that. But you know, each time they do it with their hand, and there's a lot of people, and each group has about 45 to 50 people, and they're waiting, you know, for the passport, and they have like stack of passports, and uh, so it's basically have a lot of patience, you know. Um, do you look at, just focus on where, you, where you're going, actually, the anticipation and all that. Do the talibia, uh, because it's very easy to lose focus. It's very easy to just be impatient and say, you know, start being, you know, um, uh, you know being upset, uh, upset at yourself or upset at somebody else. Uh, but just focus that where you're going, what, what's your purpose of this trip and where are you going, inshallah? And, and remember you're in Ihram. You know when you're in a state of Ihram, you have to be very careful about what you say and uh, how you treat others and all that. You have to keep that in mind. And just do it, tell you, just focus on that, inshallah, it'll be easier. So when we get out of the airport, so we'll have Aliman agents uh, who will pick us up. 
from the airport, basically. Uh, they'll, they'll be outside. If I'm not with that group, just uh, be sure when you get out, there will be somebody there. Uh, at Jeddah Airport, Medina Airport, because some of our Hajjaj are going Medina first. They'll be there to pick, to pick you up with Aliman signs, you know, just look for that, inshallah. Uh, so basically, um, just a little overview of Kaaba, uh, and I'm sure a lot of uh, you have gone to Umrah, uh, but basically, uh, where's the Zamzam Hotel? That's our hotel, and uh, we're going to be coming from uh, uh, Baba Abdulaziz. Uh, that's that's the that's the door we'll be coming from and going out because it's uh, King Abdulaziz Gate. That's the gate that's going to be close to our hotel, and from there we're going to uh, come uh, come and go because it's very easier for us. And uh, uh, the black stone is there, and Safa Marun, the side Zamzam water is over here. Muqam Ibrahim Alaihissalam in the middle. So when you go there, inshallah, you'll know it. But basically, this just is a review of uh, you know overall review of the Kaaba, inshallah. Next thing I just said. Okay, so as we were, as we were saying uh, in the beginning, uh, how, do, how do we uh, prepare physically? Uh, you have to start, uh, like I've told everyone, or almost everyone, you have to start exercising, start walking half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the evening, because there's a lot of walking there. There's a lot of waiting. Our Umrah is, uh, sometimes takes about five or six hours, because there's a lot of crowd, and we have elderly in our groups. You know, and we go with our pace. By the way, if someone has been there before and they would, don't want to be with the group, they're welcome to do that on their own schedule. Uh, they don't have to stay with us. Um, you know, if they want to do that, they can. But if they want to just do it by themselves, the husband and wife or sister and brother or somebody that already been there, they're like, you know, I don't want to stay in the group. Uh, you know, they're welcome to do that. We don't, uh, we encourage that you stay. But if you want to be on, uh, you know, on your own, you can do that. You're welcome to do that, inshallah. So um, exercise is very important and uh, mentally, how do we prepare mentally? So resolve any issues you have with your families, um, uh, with your, uh, you know, in-laws, anybody, any, any uh, uh, you know, m uh, misunderstandings or if somebody's mad at you or if you're mad at somebody, make sure you resolve that. Go with free mind uh, because one of the uh, karamat of hajj is like you have to go basically free, uh, you have to free your mind of all this uh, clutter so you can focus. You don't want to go with, with your mind cluttered and then you cannot focus. You're going to worry about everything else. So your only focus should be your Hajj, inshallah. So resolve any, any differences, anything you have with your families, inshallah. And, you know, that way you can focus on Hajj, inshallah. And so what not to take worry? <coughs> worry is what we recommend not to take. So basically, my late husband found a little, this nice story about um, about uh, Jenny. Jenny uh, uh, was the, she always worried. Wherever she went, she would pick up worry. Uh, wh wherever, like in playground, uh, somebody's house. Uh, so she would go and pick up uh, worry. And uh, she had so much worry that she would keep putting it in a bag and then it was so hard for her just to carry that bag, you know, so she could not because it was like heavy. So basically the moral of the story is uh, like leave everything here. Like uh, put everything in a bag, put all your worries in a bag. That's Put all your worries in the bag, the uh, geisha bunny, and put it in a suitcase, or uh, you know, put it in a suitcase. Put all your worries of any any kind of worry, political, uh, could be family, could be community, anything you have. Just put it in a bag, seal it, and leave it at the airport. Hopefully, when you come back, that bag will be lost. So that's what we recommend, inshallah, to leave your worries here. And the only worry you should have is, in my hunch, is, is it going to be accepted or not? That's the only thing you should focus on that you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your hajj and how can you do that? Always focus on that because you're going to have a lot of obstacles. You're going to have a lot of people trying to push you and do all kinds of things. But you have to focus on, on, on your hajj. How am I going to present it to Allah? How am I going to present this? You know, how is he going to accept my hajj? How should I behave? So always keep that in mind. When you have that in mind, everything becomes easy. Everything becomes easy because you're focusing on that. You're not focusing on, oh, somebody's pushing me, or somebody's talking about me, oh, look how he looks, or look how she looks, or, or anything. Just forget about that. Focus on yourself. Don't look at somebody else. Just focus on yourself and just focus and pray that Allah accepts that. Because you taking time out of your life, you are spending this a lot of money to go there. You know, you want to bring something back. You want to come back as a child, clean. You know, with all the deeds, bad deeds, 
forgiven, inshallah. That's what we want to focus. So how do we do that? By being patient, by uh, not arguing, but not, but by being just nice to everyone. Even if somebody's not nice to you, be nice. Just ignore them. So uh, make, make sure you focus. When you go there, believe me, a lot of people forget. Believe me, the wait, the wait in the bus, the wait uh, to board uh, the trains. Everything takes time. Everything is wait. Even though we have all the uh, uh, nice hotels that are closed uh, in Medina, in Mecca, uh, we have VIP camps, meals are there, the bathrooms are private. Everything is there. Still, there's a lot of hardship. Because Hajj is hardship. It's not easy. It's not easy going to Hajj because Allah is going to test you in every way. I mean, imagine some of us are in our 40s, 50s, 30s. You know, we have done a lot. I mean, you know, starting, I'm, I'm talking about myself. We have sinned a lot. Even, uh, we think we haven't, but we have. Just by talking about somebody, we have committed a sin. So imagine we, all our lives, we have done so much. And we are expecting to go to Hajj and be forgiven. And Allah is not going to forgive you like that. He's going to test you. And every way he's going to test you, that do you really want to be forgiven? Is this why you're here? Or are you here to just talk about people? Are you here to just say, oh, why are we taking so long? Why is the bus like this? Why is the food like this? Why do we have to eat so much food? Some, some people complain, why do we have uh, so much meat? Why, why is it not vegetarian? So, you know, that picking on little things. We should say, you know, we're of guest of Allah. He has invited us. Without his invitation, we cannot go. He has invited us. So when you go to somebody's house, when you go to your mom's house, your, your, your mother-in-law's or your sister's house, if the food is a little salty, if it's not cooked right, or do you complain? Do you start just saying, oh my God, what is this? What did you cook? I don't want this. Or, or if the sheets are not clean, what kind of sheets do you give me? I don't want to sleep here. Why do I have to sleep here? I don't want to sleep on the couch. Do you complain? No, you don't complain because you love your sister, you love your mom, you love your in-laws. You're not going to do that because you want to be nice. You want to be respectful. The same thing. Allah has invited you to his house. You are his guest for that 20 days. Just, ima just remember that. You are his guest. How does a guest behave? How does a guest behave? Remember that. A guest behaves nicely, kindly, appreciates it. Even if the food is cold, even if you're hungry for one day, you're not going to complain because he just wanted to test you. Last year, uh, we went to Mosdalifah. And our box lunches, because in Muslim, we don't have catered food, we have box lunches. We didn't have box lunches. Because uh, uh, when, when we got there, the bus got stuck. We didn't have it, and a lot of people got upset. I mean, they ate, uh, alhamdulillah, when you go there, they ate a full meal at uh, Arafat. You know, inshallah, when you go there, and everyone was full. We had drinks and everything, but some of us got upset because we didn't have their box lunch, uh, dinner that night. Uh, and it wasn't our fault. The, the bus got stuck, we could not get that food, and it came the next day, and it was too late. So basically I'm saying is, please, try to keep in mind that where you are, who has invited you. Remember the host, it's very important, it's Allah. Remember that, because a lot of us, when we go there, we're like, we're, we're thinking, and when we go there, just know shaitan is there as well. He's going to try everything to distract you. He's going to try while, you, while you're doing a salah, while you're doing a tawaf. He's going to try to, you know, basically make you that your heart is not accepted. But we're not going to do that, inshallah. We're going to focus on Allah. We're going to let shaitan just be. We're going to focus, inshallah, on Allah. So that's very important for you guys. So uh, let's talk about luggages. Uh, basically, uh, this carry-on, I have, have an example here. This is a good size carry-on for you, inshallah. It doesn't have to be like this, this color. This is a good size standard uh, for uh, for to, um, to for to carry on with you to take it with you inside the plane. This is allowed. Anything bigger than this is not allowed. So make sure it's this size, and you're allowed two luggages, 50 pounds each. And we recommend that you take one luggage from here. If you want to take two luggages, if if the small one fits inside the big one, put it inside the big one. Uh, you know, then that way you can use it uh, when you buy gifts and uh, when you, you know, coming back from Medina, coming from Hajj. Or you can buy a suitcase over there. It's very cheap, about $35 to $40. You can buy a suitcase there. So we recommend that you uh, travel very light. That way it's easier on you, easier on us, because people are has to pick up your bags and put it, uh, they have to put it inside trucks to load them, you know. So make sure you travel light. It's very important. And uh, so, 
application. Okay, so what, what can we take inside this uh, carry-on? If you want to take uh, like soaps or perfumes, you have to remember the 311 rule. So basically, uh, you're allowed three ounces of any kind of liquid, um, be it uh, uh, creams or uh, uh, perfume. It has to be three ounces. And then um, you, have, you have one quart of the size Ziploc bag. Each one is allowed one. So basically, you have three ounces uh, uh, inside one of those bags, uh, uh, the Ziploc bag. And make sure when you go there, just uh, hand it to, uh, hand it to uh, when you're going through security, take it out and leave it on the, uh, on the little trays that they have. So that way, it's easier for you. And medications. So medications are very important for people that um, have chronic disease like um, diabetes or blood pressure meds. Any medication that you use regularly, we recommend that you put it inside the carry-on. This is very important. All the medication um, you have to leave inside this uh, carry-on. If for some reason, God forbid, your luggage gets misplaced or lost for a couple of days or something, at least you have your medication. So it's very critical that you put um, all your medication inside this carry-on. Um, you're allowed to take uh, uh, even liquid medication if it's labeled, even if it's more than three ounces. If it's labeled that it's medication from a doctor and it's prescribed, uh, you, uh, you're allowed. So for the people that have uh, lost the medication, we recommend that you type up, uh, type up a paper stating, I mean, writing all the medication for what's used, uh, uh, you know, uh, writing all the names. That way you can just hand it to the um, to the uh, guard, whoever's checking you in, if they have any questions, so they'll know what the medication is used for, and that kind of uh, you know facilitates the uh, you know it's faster checking uh, basically because we're going to have a lot of people behind you. So uh, any medicine uh, which is uh, prescribed by a doctor is allowed, even if it's liquid. So and make sure you put it in your carry on, inshallah. Excuse me, one more thing. Yes. Can I take the injection with me? Yes. Yes, yes, you can do that as well. Yes. Oh. Yes. Like uh, that's our uh, basically any pacemaker, the filarities, or other implanted medical devices, metal implants, anything. Uh, you have just have like a um, identification card, you know, because you, you cannot go through. For, for example, if you have a pacemaker, you cannot go through the security because the alarm is going to go off. Uh, so you, uh, you have that paper beforehand from your doctor if anybody has a pacemaker, uh, basically, and then you can hand it to the guard and you can be pat down, inshallah. Uh, any other medical related oxygens that everything, if somebody has the oxygen, they have to have with them, or, uh, you know, uh, for diabetes, syringes, anything, just have a list and you can have that with you in the carry on. And for the people that have, uh, you know, Islamic uh, clothing, uh, you know, uh, you're, uh, it's okay if they're going to take a little bit longer because we're covered, you know. Usually, uh, right now, it's not that, that bad because we can go through the uh, camera with the security that takes a uh, photo of uh, you, but it's not uh, a photo that uh, it's, uh, you're not like bare, you're not naked when they have the photo. It's just uh, the skeleton view of you, that you don't have anything inside. So you can go through the camera because I thought that you know, they can see, uh, for the sisters, they can see your body, but they can't. They can't see your body, basically they're looking for uh, objects that are there, so that's faster. If you choose not to do that, you'll be pat down and just have patience, you know, because uh, they're protecting us, you know. And, and a, lot, a lot of these people, we were like, okay, we, we think, we're think we thinking that they're discriminating against us. No, they're helping us. They're helping us so we have a safe journey, so we don't have anybody that doing anything crazy. So it's for our own good. Have patience and let them do it and make jokes with them, you know, let them pat you down, let them, let them look for whatever, you know, they're, they're trying to protect us. They're not against us, they're, they're with us. So, you know, for the ladies that are wearing that, please, you know, we have patience, inshallah. So, what to take with, basically. So, uh, stay light, uh, again, um, and uh, necessary medication, prescription drugs, you know. Uh, so, for the ladies, I, I don't want you to pack very heavy. Welcome. Um, for the ladies, I, I don't want you to, or for the gentlemen, I don't want you to pack very heavy. Uh, carry like a couple of, uh, couple of uh, clothes, like uh, it's very easy to buy uh, uh, clothing for women over there. There's a bias, there's, a, there's different kinds, very cheap, cheap ones, like for $15, $10 you can buy so many. So make sure you just uh, take a couple of, of your clothes, not, not a lot basically. 
uh, it's not necessary, even for the gentlemen. There's thobes there, very cheap thobes you can buy. Um, and for the Afghans, you can, uh, or for uh, our brothers from Pakistan and India, you can uh, wear the kurta uh, pajama. You can wear that. Uh, it's a, or for salwar kameez, you can, you can take that with you. Um, if you have a bias, you know, light basically. And don't take a lot. And for, we have a laundry system there. Um, where you, you can take your clothing for, you know, they can wash it and iron it for you. We don't recommend uh, inside the hotel, that's very expensive. Um, uh, and then we'll show you where the laundry is, you know, they take your clothes and they wash it and then, uh, welcome. Uh, they wash it and then, uh, you know, they iron it for you and then you just go and pick up the next day. So if you have time, take it over there. Some of the sisters, uh, they wash their uh, clothes inside the hotels and then they hang them, uh, you know, in the bathroom. Don't, don't, uh, I mean, don't be inconvenient to others. And if you feel like you have to do that, and please ask your roommates if that's okay with them, because you don't want to clutter the bathrooms with your clothing. You know, maybe they don't like it. You know, so ask the sisters. You know, if it's okay with them to do that, inshallah. Um, if not, then we have the laundry uh, mat. You can, we will show you where it is, and then you can take it over there. It's very convenient. So for the money bag, what to, what kind of money bag is recommended? So a lot of the groups, uh, they recommend this one. It's a belt you put on around your waist. We don't recommend this. Because this can be easily cut from the back and your money can be stolen. Um, we also don't want the brothers to put their money here as well. Because one of the brothers had $1,000 inside this, uh, despite uh, me telling him not to do that. And somebody cut his belt and you know took it. $1,000. So we don't recommend this. Or this. What do we recommend? This. This is very good. So basically you put this around your neck and you put it inside your ihram or inside your clothing for the ladies. And this is basically, you know, I will see a little bit. You can put your money here, you can, uh, uh, you know, put whatever, credit card, whatever you have. Because you're going to have this with you at all times. Even if you're sleeping, this is very light, you know, you can have this with you. So you can buy this in Target, Walmart, um, like $9.99 or $7.99, something like that, or order online. But something like this, even if it's not exactly like this, something that you can wear around your neck, or where you have your money in front of you, well, you know, if, even if they cut it from the back, you know it drops right in front of you. So this is very safe. So for the men, uh, we, also, we gave uh, Ihram two piece uh, towels for everyone basically and we showed you how to put it on and if you still need help with that inshallah you can let us know um, and for the, for shoes flip-flops are good for the ladies alhamdulillah you know it's very easy uh, to put on and take out and put in your bag and for udu and everything for the gentlemen you can have those flip-flops or, or those uh, that are uh, springs where you can you know those, uh, those uh, slippers are good too and for the ladies we do recommend like a comfortable shoes because if you go on tours uh, and you know, on, going from home to there, if you have like t like a, a tennis shoes or something uh, that's comfortable that you can walk when you go shopping, you know, if you don't want to wear your slippers, uh, we recommend that. And for the clothing, uh, like I explained, uh, you know, comfortable, modest. Uh, make sure if you're uh, wearing your clothes, make sure it's not see-through. It's very important, um, and it's not tight because when you're doing tawaf and when you're doing, uh, you know, when you're going, uh, even when you're going shopping or whatever, it gets, it gets very hot. And uh, tight clothes not only shows your shape of your body for women, which is not good, it also, it's very, you get very hot easily, so you sweat. So make sure it's loose and it's not see-through. It's very important for your sleeves, you know, it's very important over there. And also make, wear these hats. If you don't have them, buy some. If not, then you can find them in the... Uh, uh, in Mecca and Medina, but it's very important that you're covered. Your, your, you know, your hair doesn't show, uh, and your arms make sure it's covered. So you have to follow that. And uh, as our sheikh told you that you, your hair is not supposed to show, then you could, you know, I think uh, you can have to pay for dam if your hair shows while you're in ihram. And uh, also, we wanted to recommend a, a light jacket, uh, you know, a, a light sweater. From Medina, just in the morning, it gets a little bit breezy. Um, that's the only time you may need it for the morning uh, prayer, but uh, it's, it gets, it's warm, so you don't need it throughout the uh, journey. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, some miscellaneous things that we recommend that uh, since we've been there, alhamdulillah, this is going to be our ninth year. Uh, so what, what have we found useful? So masks are very important, especially this one, which kind of guarantees the antiviral face mask. So the face mask, you know, this is already in a plastic bag, so you can just take it with you. Uh, uh, you take it off and you put it on. You can have it throughout the day, or, or uh, while you're doing your um, umrah, or you're doing tawaf, or uh, when you're in a crowd, you can you can wear this. You know, if you're sensitive to uh, you know, like uh, getting colds very easily. Uh, this is recommended that you should put this on, and this kind of helps you a lot. And uh, for example, if you're doing your salah and if you don't have your praying rug, uh, which we do recommend to get a musalla, that's very important because uh, uh, when you're doing your um, when you're doing your uh, sujood or sajda, uh, somebody could have coughed there, or somebody could have just you know kind of spit or something, you're not supposed to do that, but if, when they're coughing, your, your saliva goes, and you can get that germ, you know, so to have your masala and make sure you have your mask if you don't have that, so this is very good. And also, um, a lot of the brothers and sisters, especially sisters, they kind of don't like, their room, a roommate might snore, so you might have that, and remember, still, your, your guest of Allah, you have to be patient. So we recommend these earplugs. Earplugs are very handy, I tell you, I use them all the time. <laughs> you put these, put one in your ear, and you know, one on each ear, and then you can sleep soundly. You cannot hear anything. Because when you're tired, even the person that doesn't snore, when you're tired, you snore. It happens, because you're just out of it, you're so tired. So this is very important, take these earplugs with you. Comes very handy. And one other thing that we recommend, and hand sanitizers. Very important. Especially these ones, you can just uh, uh, clip them on the bottom of your um, on the bottom of your string bag and you can have it with you. This is very important. Going inside Haram, coming out. Anywhere you, that there's a crowd, when you come out, put this on. This is going to be your friend. And we have asked the ulama, yeah, does it matter that it has alcohol? Yeah, I was going to just say that. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, the ulama has said that it's okay to use this since you're protecting yourself. So you're not going to be. Um, if I, am I correct? Let me start. Thank you. Let me turn this to Not an Not an ihram. You cannot use it in ihram. Okay, so uh, don't use it when you're in the state of ihram. But uh, everywhere else, this is very important that you use that. What else? Vitamin C. Um, so vitamin C is very important in Mecca. Basically, um, we're gonna do a lot of tawaf or umrah, or we're very like the adrenaline is like running, and we just you want to do everything. And, and when we go to Medina, there's no tawaf, there's no umrah. Basically, there's only five daily prayers. The body just like relaxes, you know. And then you catch a disease. Everyone most likely gets sick in Medina. Everyone. That's just given. You get a cold in Medina, maybe for a day or two, or sometimes it lingers on until you come back, you know. And uh, we don't recommend that you take any medicines from here because none of the medication, alhamdulillah, doesn't work over there. Even if you take um, antibiotics, it doesn't work there for some reason. Only the medicine there works. So what do we recommend? Pepto-Bismol. Take that with you because that helps a lot. And from, uh, you know, just uh, some, some bodies are very sensitive. Uh, and vitamin C. Vitamin C, start taking it now. You know, this is 1,000 milligrams. Take one every day. You know, if your if your stomach is not sensitive, make sure that your stomach is not sensitive. Because some people uh, that have uh, acid issues, they can't take it. So, uh, you know, try to come up with something else. But for for the overall, this is like the best thing. Especially when you get sick. Uh, for example, some uh, some nurse, God bless her, last last year told me because I used to take the powder once. You know, where you dissolve it, the emergency and all those things, the airborne and all that. I used to take that. But this, she told me, no, take the, um, take this because this one, the tablets are about a thousand milligrams. So what I did last year, and the, take Nature's Mate because it's like a uh, real, not the, uh, the, you know, the other brands. Uh, what I did was, as soon as I just felt like a little bit of, you know, I, you know, you feel like itchy in your throat, I took two of these, two of these with two Advils. Wallahi, I didn't get sick. Alhamdulillah. And I kept taking it two every day. So make sure this is your friend. You know, if your stomach is not sensitive, take this with you. 1,000 milligrams. And uh, 
what else? Okay, so uh, for sleeping bags, uh, we don't need it. Uh, so a lot of people have uh, a question that uh, we don't need that because uh, uh, since we're taking the train system, uh, we have designated area, carpeted uh, area for our group. We spend the night there, alhamdulillah. So we don't need that. And we can take the blanket from our, um, from our tent and we can take that with us. And some people, if you want to take your pillow, you can take that as well. You know, you're welcome to do that. You just have to carry it with you. Uh, we, we are going to need it inside Arafat, uh, uh, you know, inside the tent when you feel resting. Uh, you can take that with you, uh, but just, you know, basically if you have the strength to carry that all day if we're not inside the tent, and you can do that. From here, we, we, we don't recommend that you take uh, some of the groups. Um, they do take it because inside their tents, uh, they need that, you know. Uh, they don't have, uh, they don't have like, a, uh, they don't have um, uh, mattresses. Like in our tents, uh, inside Amina, we have uh, mattresses which uh, turns into couches. You can rest uh, during the day. They give you one pillow, one blanket, and that that, that little space is yours, basically. That's your room. And your neighbor, whoever it is, uh, you know, like, uh, by the time we go to uh, a mina, a mina tents, you'll have friends, and you guys could, like, sleep by each other if you want to do that. So some of the other unscented Vaseline and toiletries, uh, nail clippers, small scissors, make sure you put it in your big bag. And uh, just know while you're in Iran what to do and not to do, basically. Uh, you have to always follow that rule. Make, keep in mind what you can do, uh, what, what, what you can do, actually, when you're in Iran. And uh, we also recommend an MP3 player for some of the sisters, you know, they just want to hear, uh, listen to a citation of Quran because they cannot recite or they don't know. Just have that with you and you can just put it on while you're doing tawaf and uh, while you're doing Safa Marwa, that could just play. You know, so we recommend that for them. And for the ladies that know how to do it too, if you want to just uh, don't want to read and you just want to listen, you can do that as well. We recommend that. So cell phones, a lot of people had questions about that. Uh, basically, you can get cell phones from there. But they're very cheap, $35, $25, $40. You can get it there um, in our hotel lobby uh, downstairs in the and uh, um, uh, where it says zero, that's the lobby, that's the main lobby where there's shopping center, there's food, and, uh, and it's downstairs, you can just buy that, and then each time uh, you use, the, you, they just give you a SIM card. Uh, so we recommend that you um, use that SIM card to make the phone call, and then give them the number, because if they call you, uh, the minutes are more. If you call them, the, you know, your SIM card is done within 10 minutes or less. So give your numbers to them, you know. Uh, I mean, personally, I would say that don't give anybody your number. Basically, you don't want them to call you. You want to focus. You know, you leave everything here. Leave your kids, everything, whoever it is, just leave, leave everyone here. But go over there and focus on yourself. Uh, don't be on the phone all the time. Because I see a lot of people are just always like calling people here in Afghanistan and India. Don't do that. Focus on your Ibadah. Uh, you'll see your family when you come back, inshallah. Personally, uh, I don't I don't keep in touch with my family. They know. Maybe I, I'll call like once or twice. Uh, you know, I'm okay. Uh, but uh, we do keep in touch. Uh, um, uh, we have a Facebook page, um, Tawheed Caravan. Just like us uh, on our Facebook page. We're gonna post everything, uh, whatever we do. Okay, we're, if we get to Mecca, inshallah, to Jeddah, we'll post. And uh, our sister uh, Maria John has volunteer. Volunteer. She's gonna upload all the pictures, whatever I send her. She's gonna do that. So you families, if they've liked our page and if they are on Facebook. Uh, we'll have we'll have that inshallah. Your picture might be in there. So for the sisters that don't want their pictures taken, uh, we understand, we respect that. Just let us know because um, we will post pictures. We'll take group pictures. And whoever wants the you know the pictures be taken, please uh, you know let us know. If you don't want that, we respect that. Just let us know beforehand. So that's one way to keep in touch. And if they are not in Facebook and they don't have an account. Um, well, I'll gather uh, emails for everyone. I'm going to be sending an email, contact information. Uh, inshallah, our sister will, will send uh, up to date, um, you know, whatever happens. So just uh, not, we're not going to do it every day like major ones. Okay, we got to Mecca. We did our Umrah, alhamdulillah. And uh, now we're going to get to Medina, inshallah. Uh, and then now we're in uh, the tents so or just the major milestones that we have, inshallah, will be posted. Food. Uh, there's plenty of food. Uh, we're going to have buffet. Uh, breakfast, dinner, uh, meals uh, inside. Um, 
the building, three meals uh, inside the tents. Uh, please uh, just know your limit, know how much you can take, know your body, uh, because you don't want to uh, fall sick. Just eat enough that you're full, that you have the strength to do your abada. Don't overeat because you get you get sick. You know it's easy to because uh, there's a lot of food when you just look at it. You want to try this, that, and that, and then you, you fall. You know you you sick because everyone normally we don't have like 70 food uh, for breakfast. We don't have like 70 things prepared or for lunch or for dinner. We don't have that much food. You know so just eat uh, enough uh, which you know uh, your strength of your body. Don't overeat basically. And be sensitive to your uh, physical lim limits. For example, we don't recommend for the people that are elderly or for the people uh, that have knee problems, leg problems, to go, uh, you know, climb Mount Hira or Jebel Anur. Know your limits. Uh, we don't want you to do three, four Umrahs. Uh, because what's important is uh, the last few days of Hajj. Like basically, the five days and the four days, basically, basically we're uh, in vacation. You know, we're on vacation. Uh, Hajj starts in the last few days where we're inside Mena. That's Hajj. You want to keep your strength for the last the, uh, for the last few days, um, so you can do your avada, so you can have the strength to do. So you're not ill. Some people just they're they're sick. They can't even do their uh, tawaf. Uh, you know, they, they can't do their Hajj properly because they're sick. They, they have overworked their bodies in the beginning. So know your limits. That's very important. For the youngsters, if they want to climb on here, uh, just have a small group, we'll talk about it, then you can do that, you know, if you have the ability. But for the elderly, we don't recommend it. It takes about two hours to go up and down, and it's a steep, steep mountain. So know your limits. Your physical limits are very important because you know yourself. Okay, so uh, like I was saying in the beginning, the ID card we, the ID card we provided for you, it's very important. You have that with you all at all times. Uh, for you to uh, go inside and outside uh, our tents, uh, for uh, for example, if, if you faint, if you, something happens to you, they'll know where to take you, basically. And they'll also give you a bracelet, inshallah, when we first uh, get to uh, Mecca, inshallah, on the way you'll have a bracelet, which basically tells you where our tents are. Uh, it's in an Arabic, um, everyone has different number, they're going to uh, they're gonna tell you, so it's very important to have that with you at all times. Uh, Inshallah, I'm going to reiterate over there as well, but sometimes you're going to use that even if you're taking shower, even if you're making wudu, have that with you, especially if you're elderly. If you get lost for some reason, you know, uh, God forbid, they'll know where exactly to take you. They'll know exactly what tent to take you, uh, which location. You, you'll be found, but just, uh, God forbid, if you're lost, have patience. Uh, those people know. Their system is very good. They'll find you eventually. Uh, but uh, people that get lost are the people that don't listen to us. For example, we go to uh, Arafat, we're staying inside the tent, you know. You can stay inside the tent and pray. You don't have to be in the open air. You don't have to be on top of that hill. Uh, a lot of people, there, they think that they have to be on top of the hill, so they want to go there, even though I tell them not to do that. Because when you go there and you, when you come back, all the tents are white. They're all the same. You don't know which one's your tent. So people have gone lost that way for two days. They're lost, you know. And, and the crowd is so much, and the police, uh, they have to deal with so many people, so it takes them a longer time to track. So basically, you're away from our group because you didn't listen. And those are the people that have gotten lost. So when we say, don't do this, don't go there, stay with the group, stay with the group, please. Because uh, you think you know, you don't. All the, all the tests are the same there. There's no numbers. Uh, you're not going to remember. So uh, we, when we instruct something, please listen to us, inshallah. That we won't get lost. And before you leave uh, your home, you know, uh, have a checklist. For example, you know, don't forget your passport. It's very important. Have that with you. Uh, there's a lot of people that come at the airport. They don't have their passport. And come early. We recommend four hours before your flight. I'll be there four hours. I recommend that you come there. If you don't like your seat, if you want to switch your seat, uh, if you come early, you have that ability. God forbid if you forget something, then your family member can bring it, or you can drive back and get it. So you have plenty of time. Make sure you come there early and you have a checklist of all the things necessary that you have to take, especially your medicine. That's very important. Make sure you get enough medicine from your doctor for the time that you're staying there. That's very important. Uh, I, I, wanna, I want you guys to all make a copy of your um, passport. Have that with you. Um, if you lose it, God forbid, that way they can track it and that way, uh, you know, you get a passport. Because um, the, there's a lot of, uh, there's one person that lost her passport, her green card, she put everything in one purse. 
uh, which we don't recommend. Um, yeah, that's a very good point. I have to uh, reiterate that, that. I don't want you guys to take your purse inside Hara. Um, I don't want you to take your purse or money only inside this money bag. So that one lady, what she did was she took her purse, she had her money, she had her jewelry, everything. She just bought like a, a $5,000 jewelry, gold, everything. So she started talking to this one lady. Uh, when, uh, when, you know, she, she was very friendly. When she went to Salah, when she did uh, Sajda, when she got up, the purse wasn't there. So basically her Hajj was kind of ruined. You know, her focus was like ruined. It wasn't, the focus wasn't that, uh, it's Allah can accept my Hajj. Her focus was like, you know, I lost my money, I lost this. And, uh, and that jewelry wasn't hers either. So make sure that you put it in a safe box if you have it in the, inside inside the um, hotel. And we don't even, we're not even sure about that, you know, because uh, the managers, they have the key to that box. So I, I personally don't even recommend that. Uh, but that's the only safest place that you, you could have. But you know, you, you cannot trust anybody, honest to God. So have your money, inshallah. So yeah, when we, when we get there, your passports are with us with uh, with uh, Mataf, you know, the, those are the main people where they keep your passports, basically. So that's why when you're a group, you have to stay in that group. You can't get out, you can't go. Some people, uh, they say, I want to go visit somebody in Jeddah. Please don't ask, you can't do that. We have uh, we have visa only for Mecca and Medina, uh, not for Riyadh or Jeddah. If your family's there, if they want to come visit, fine. They're welcome to come inside our hotel, they're welcome to come visit, or in a designated area, but you're not allowed to go to Jeddah. See your family. You're not allowed to do that, so don't ask please. Somebody. And so make sure you have a copy of your green card. Make sure you have your a copy of your passport. That's very important um, uh, to have that along with you. And please uh, uh, print your itinerary. Print your itineraries. Uh, some of you don't have it because we're still working on your, uh, uh, especially for Emirates, because those are the people that came last. We're still working on that. We're trying to find a, a good route. Um, so uh, when you get it, and if you don't have a printer, let me know so I can make a copy and bring it to you, inshallah. Uh, and if you don't have a printer, if you have a neighbor or somebody, your daughter, whoever has a printer, please, you know, let me uh, let me know so I can forward, the, uh, forward them that, uh, uh, that itinerary you can print it. It's very important to have that with you, inshallah. So uh, the du'as, and we all talked about that. Um, one, one important salat al janazah. That's very important. After every salah in Haram and Medina, there's salat al janazah. I, I most uh, maybe in the past uh, uh, years that I have uh, been there, maybe a couple of times there was a salat al janazah. There, uh, in every uh, salah, there's salat al janazah. So know how to do it. Learn how to do that. Inshallah. So salat al janazah is very important. Uh, learn that. Uh, what to recite. Uh, there's different mothers, you know, they, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, for the takbir, uh, for Hanafi mother, they do only one takbir. Uh, please ask your sheikh how to do that, or ask your imam, whoever you go to masjid. That's very important. That comes very handy. And make sure you do that. Even if you're a woman, do salat al janazah. has a lot of sawab, and you can ask your sheikh. So make sure you do that. Make sure you know how to do that. That's very important. And uh, know the takbir is what to read, uh, you know, between the takbirs, that's very important. So that's one thing I recommend. And because uh, the first time I went there, I didn't know what to do, honestly. <laughs> and I saw everyone stood up for Salat al Janazah. I didn't know what to do. So I just followed that. And then I had to ask. So that's, uh, you know, know that. It uh, has a lot of sawab, inshallah. Yeah, and um, so do I suffer? And make sure you do, before you get out of your house on that day, we recommend that you take a shower, do two cuts of uh, nafal, uh, do two cuts of nafal and get out, get out, of, get out of your house that way and do uh, du'a and stuff. Know how to do that, inshallah. And that's it. So now I'm going to take, uh, we, have, uh, we have some time for questions. If you have any questions, please. Anybody? Yeah. How about you Oh yeah, okay, for the luggages. For the luggages, the, for the carry-on is 15 pounds, less than 15 pounds. And what do we want inside our uh, carry-on? I want to reiterate, we want our ihram for the men. We want our bags, the bags I give you, the scarf that I give you, you want inside your, um, inside the carry-on. Make sure for the, for the men, it's very important to have your ihram and your belt inside because without that, you cannot, 
you cannot enter Jeddah. I mean, you can, but you have to have that. So make sure you have that. And for the sisters, if you want to change uh, inside the uh, airport, make sure you have extra clothes in there as well. You sh your slippers for the men, you have it uh, inside your carry-on. So that's very important. Um, and it has to be less than 50 pounds. And the size has to be that because they won't allow you. And for the luggages, again, it's 50 pounds each. Two luggages per person. Inshallah. Any other question? Yeah, for, uh, for some of our... Um, uh, for some of us going uh, via uh, Frankfurt, there's no showers there, or Doha. Make sure you take your showers at home. Take your showers at home, uh, you know, and uh, put your clean clothes on from your house. And then we just make a udu at the airport. That's what we're going to do. But we can't take showers because we don't have enough time or there's no place to do it. In Germany? In Germany, too, yes. So we're just going to uh, basically do udu. Any other questions? Yes, brother. Any other questions? Yes, sister. When we are taking the money, can we take the traveler's check or cash? Oh, oh, thank you for reminding me of that. Okay, so basically, for uh, if you're uh, if you're uh, taking money, please take hundred dollar bills, the recent ones. When you go to your bank, ask for recent hundred dollar bills, not cash your check because that a lot of places don't take it, and you have to go to the bank. There's a lot of a lot of, uh, you know, like a heartache for you. So take $100 bills and take one credit card just in case you need something. You know, in case of emergency. Uh, that's what we recommend. Nothing else. And make sure the, uh, the $100 bills are recent bills, not the, uh, the old ones. Because they give you a little bit hard time. And every store that you go, they take your money and then they give you uh, exchange and we up. And all the exchange rate is it's been the same. Uh, it's uh, three to uh, one hundred dollars. Uh, it's like three hundred seventy uh, to three hundred seventy-five dollars. Uh, I mean, real. So. Thank you.